Welcome to this video segment on cursors. This is Claire Rajan and in this tutorial I'll be explaining implicit cursors. To begin with, a cursor is defined as a work area where a SQL statement is executed. In PL SQL programming, there are two types of cursors, implicit cursors and explicit cursors. In this video segment, I'll be discussing implicit cursors. As its name suggests, an implicit cursor is a predefined cursor that exists within an Oracle database. The implicit cursor is associated with data manipulation language statements, where data manipulation language statements or DML statements are the insert, update, delete and merge statements. The name of the implicit cursor is SQL and it's often called the SQL cursor. To understand the behavior and the use of the SQL cursor, consider the following slide. First look at the data in the employees table. There are four columns, EMPNO, ename, salary and DEPT, EMPNO standing for the employee number, ename for the employee's name, salary is the salary of the employee and DEPT is the department that the employee belongs to. Notice that there are three rows in the table. Specifically observe the last row where the employee number is 120 and the name of the employee is Rick. Now consider the PL SQL block that is also written on the slide to delete data from the employees table. The PL SQL block reads as begin delete from employees where EMPNO equal to 120 end. When this block is executed the output will be the string PL SQL procedure completed successfully. At this time, you might think to yourself, so what happened when the block was executed? Was the row to be deleted found in the table? Was one row deleted or was more than one row found and deleted in the table? In order to write complete PL SQL blocks in which DML statements are written, we need to make use of the attributes of the SQL cursor. Because the de delete statement is a DML statement, its execution will be associated with the implicit cursor called the SQL cursor. The SQL cursor has certain attributes that can be used to write more complete programs that answer the questions that were raised in the previous slide. The three most commonly used attributes are SQL% found, SQL% not found and SQL% row count. The SQL in the attribute name is the name of the cursor. SQL% found is an attribute that returns a true or false value. A value true is returned when the most recent DML affected, executed by the SQL cursor affects one or more rows. It will return a value false if the most recent DML does not affect one or more rows. SQL% not found is the opposite of SQL% found and it also returns a true or false value. A value true is returned when the most recent DML executed by the SQL cursor does not affect one or more rows. It will return a value false if the most recent DML affects one or more rows. Finally, the SQL% row count attribute returns a numeric value identifying the number of rows affected by the most recent DML statement. We'll now take a look at the same program that ha was discussed earlier. However, um, here we will um, include the use of the SQL% not found attribute to answer the question, was a row deleted or not? The program that's written reads as, begin, delete from employees where EMPNO equal to 120, if SQL% percent not found, then dbms underscore output dot put underscore line, the row to be deleted was not found, else dbms underscore output dot put underscore line, the row was deleted, end if end. Notice the use of the SQL% percent not found attribute in the conditional if statement immediately following the delete statement. If the row to be deleted, that is, the row where the employee number 120 was not found in the table, 
then sql% percent not found would have become true and the string that would have been displayed would be the row to be deleted was not found. If on the other hand the employee 120 was in the table, sql% percent not found would have become false. The else part of the if statement would have been executed returning the string the row was deleted. If you take a look at the data in the employees table as displayed on this slide, the row 120 does exist. So executing this particular PL SQL block, the string that will be displayed on the screen would be the row was deleted. Here we have a similar program with the SQL percent found attribute. Following the delete statement is a conditional if statement that is referencing the SQL percent found attribute. SQL percent found will become true if the row to be deleted is found in the table. This will in turn display the string the row was deleted. SQL percent found will become false if the row to be deleted is not found in the table resulting in the else part of the if statement being executed and the display of the string would be the row to be deleted was not found. If you look at the data in the employees table as shown on this slide, the row with employee number 120 does not exist. If you execute this particular PL SQL block based on the data that is shown in the table, you will receive the output of the row to be deleted was not found. Here we can see the use of the SQL% percent row count attribute that answers the question how many rows were affected by the DML. If you want to know how many rows were deleted in the program that is being discussed, you can use the SQL% percent row count attribute as shown in the program. Following the delete statement is the conditional if statement that is checking to see if the DML affected a row or not using the SQL% percent not found attribute. If the row was not found, the string that would have been displayed would be the row to be deleted was not found. If however, the row with employee number 120 was found in the table, the SQL% percent not found attribute will become false. The else part of the if would execute displaying the string which would be a number followed by the words rows deleted. The number that is displayed will indicate the number of rows affected by the delete. Considering the data in the employees table, Notice that 120 does exist and the output of this particular PL SQL program would be one row deleted. On this slide you have a program to try based on the data that is displayed in the employees table. It will give you an opportunity to see if you have understood the topic that is being discussed in the tutorial. You must write a PL SQL block that will update and increase the salaries of the employees in Department 10 by 500. The program should indicate whether or not the update happened along with messages as shown on the slide. If the update did not affect any rows, the message to, to be displayed should be no rows updated dash department not found. If the update did affect rows, the message should be n rows updated where n is a numeric value indicating the number of rows updated. At this time you can pause the video if you want so that uh, you can try the program out as the solution is displayed on the next slide. The solution to the program uh, that was displayed on the previous slide is on this slide. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening.